Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new box office breakdown here on Max Talks Movies. We're talking about the box office of the weekend of November 26th to November 28th, and also including in that five-day weekend from Thanksgiving. Hopefully, you guys all had a fun Thanksgiving. If you're new to the channel, I do this box office breakdown show every single Monday. I break down the weekend domestic box office, the overall domestic box office of the entire year, and also looking at the worldwide box office and giving you a preview of what's coming out this upcoming week. Um, and on my upcoming videos. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, streaming platform reviews, movie rankings, and this show every single Monday. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers. So please, if you're also watching these videos, you always do every single Monday. Let, thank you all for your support. Let's get to 100 subscribers. Help me out on that journey. Also, please like the video. That's the best way to support the show. And comment down below what movie or movies did you see in theaters this weekend? So let's talk about the box office. This is just the three-day total. Now, I'll say this. The one through five in the three-day total is the same one through five in the five-day total. So when I talk about three of the movies that came out this week, and I give you my their total gross, that's their total gross from the five-day week. So in its this is just the three-day weekend, by the way. This is not including Wednesday and Thursday. The, the, the total domestic gross will be. Not a big shocker, but Encanto from Disney, which I have reviewed on this channel already, is number one at the box office this past weekend. 27.2 is the three-day total. The five-day total for Encanto is $40.5 million. So I think a lot of people are expecting this to do a little bit better, especially during a five-day Thanksgiving weekend. We'll talk about why I think that it got challenged in that way. But Disney really capitalizes literally both Frozen films were both released during the Thanksgiving weekend, as well as uh, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, the sequel to Rebecca Ralph. So those are three of the top five biggest Thanksgiving five day tolls of the whole of ever. And Encanto creeping into 40 for the total, not as big as I think a lot of people expected. Now, as I'll talk about later, there's no competition this weekend. So Encanto has a chance to keep that up. But again, this was a week where there's kids are out of school, either on Monday or starting on Wednesday. So even though this film did release on Wednesday, I think a lot of people are expecting this to be a higher total. In second place this weekend, and a big, big boost in its second weekend was Ghostbusters Afterlife. In its second weekend, it made 24.2 uh, in the three-day total. That's a 45% drop off. And its uh, total gross in two weeks, that includes the five-day, is 87.5 million dollars so ghostbusters afterlife with a really good second weekend we kind of expected that it kind of wanted the, really the biggest film after eternals it got its own weekend the week before thanksgiving and we thought because it's also a family film that it would also do really well during thanksgiving for those kids who didn't check it out opening weekend it did so it only lost this past three-day weekend by 3.06 million dollars to encanto which is a Disney film that just came out. So really good competition, really good news for Ghostbusters Afterlife as it continues its really good box office trend. The second of the, the second new release this weekend that came in third place is House of Gucci from Ridley Scott does much better than his previous film earlier this year. House of Gucci makes $14.4 million in the three-day weekend. And if you total up the three-day and the five-day weekend, the five-day weekend total for House of Gucci is $22 million. So House of Gucci, again, a pretty much an Oscar push, really divisive film by both critics and audiences, but a really high-level cast and a top-tier director. So House of Gucci doing very solid in its, in its opening weekend. In fourth place, hanging on into the top five is Marvel's Eternals. Eternals makes $7.9 million, which is a 28% dip in its fourth weekend of release. And Eternals is now up to $150 million here domestically. So it will not be able to catch, actually we'll talk about the, I'll talk about the just a second, the domestic box office, but 150 million, again, no competition really coming up for Eternals. Uh, the next big Marvel film coming out um, is Spider-Man No Way Home, which was releasing, I believe, yeah, two weeks from Friday. So definitely stay tuned for that. In fifth place, the third new release of the weekend during a lot of things that were happening that come out during Thanksgiving, and that was Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, the new part of the Resident Evil franchise. It made 5.3 in the three-day weekend and 8.8 .8 in the five-day five total. So Resident Evil, not the best star, but again, a lot of competition this weekend. Now let's talk about the top 20 movies at the domestic box office. There's actually no changes 
There's actually one change to domestic bustles. We'll get that sec. Shang-Chi is at number one, 224. Venom is at number two, 209. Black Widow 183, F9 is at 173, 160 for A Quiet Place Part 2, No Time to Die is at number 6 with 158, 150 for Eternals, 121 for Free Guy, 116 for Jungle Cruise, but the big move as we expected, Dune is now in the top 10, it passes Godzilla versus Kong, as Godzilla Kong was at right at $100 million, Dune is at 102, so it took Godzilla vs. Kong came out in March, and it takes it all the way to the last week of November for it to be off this list. Again, Godzilla vs. Kong was really the first big movie to come out during the pandemic. Uh, it was the first movie that I came back to seeing in theaters in Los Angeles. It was the first movie that when theaters opened back up, it was the first movie there, saw it in IMAX. So it will be the, forever the first movie in a year that I saw uh, during the pandemic. So Godzilla vs. Kong is now off this list, Dune is at number 10. Um, when you look at the worldwide box office, no major changes here. Um, two Chinese films are at one and two. No Time to Die is at number three. F9 is at number four. Godzilla versus Kong is at number six, so it's very up there in the worldwide. Venom, Let There Be Carnage is at number seven. Shang-Chi is at number eight. Black Widow, nine. Dune is at 10, but Eternals is only $23 million short of Dune uh, to join the top 10. As I said, uh, early about Eternals. Eternals is currently trailing all the MCU movies from earlier this year. So Eternals is at 150 domestically. When you look at um, Black Widow is at number three with to 183. And Shang-Chi well, on a Labor Day weekend got 224. So uh, Eternals is definitely the, will be the least successful box office MCU movie of the year. It does pretty much seem like the Spider-Man No Way Home based on all the different movie theater sites breaking down will be the biggest movie of the entire year and biggest movie for Marvel. So Shang-Chi will hold that for basically two more weeks and we'll see, can Spider-Man already take that in its opening weekend? We'll talk about that a lot more in the coming weeks as we're getting closer to probably the biggest movie in about a year and a half since Avengers Endgame came out in May of 2019. As I said, there's actually no major releases coming out in theaters this weekend. So all of these movies, including Ghostbusters Afterlife and Kanto, House of Gucci, all get basically a free shot again as no new releases are coming out this weekend. The biggest release coming out in the next couple of weeks is West Side Story. That comes out December 10th. That comes out next week. We're going to talk about that movie coming out in the next video. So no new releases. As I said, West Side Story is coming out this month. Um, Spider-Man No Way Home is coming out this month. Sing 2 is coming out this month. The King's Man. I'm trying to go through all the big releases of, of December. Nightmare Alley from Beginning with the Tour. Matrix Resurrections. Licorice Pizza and American Underdog are all the big new releases hitting theaters in December because this Friday is the beginning of December. So with that said, thanks for watching me on this box office breakdown show. Please like the video, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things that will really support the channel so much. Um, as of my upcoming videos, tomorrow is the last day of November. So I'm going to give you my ranking of all of the new releases that I saw in the month of November. That's up to like 13, 14 films. The biggest month of movies I've seen all year long. So big ranking. That will be coming out tomorrow, Wednesday. I'm going to have probably two reviews for you guys. Um, definitely a spoiler review of episode three of Hawkeye, as well as a review of the new Netflix film of the week, Power of the Dog. So a lot of stuff coming out. Um, no new movie theater releases this weekend, but maybe I'll see Resident Evil. We'll, we shall see. But overall, those are my videos coming up. I'll see you guys. Very also join me back here next week when we break down the box office. Uh, I'll see you guys there.